What is going on YouTube? I'm Lamont at large. Today we are in Waco, Texas. I'm here to visit the grave of one Tony Thompson. If you don't know who he is, uh, he was the lead singer of an R&B group from the 90s called High Five. And if you don't know the history of High Five, let me just tell you something right now. The most oddest R&B group whose backstory you're ever going to hear. If you know another group that has had so many uh, twists and turns, uh, bad things happening in and around the group, you let me know, because I personally do not know of a R&B group that has had so much happen to them that high five. Uh, some of it is quite unbelievable. One of the weirdest R&B groups uh, that I've ever come across and uh, some of their music uh, you will definitely uh, remember, you will definitely know. So without further ado, let's get into the video and just a warning, it's a little bit windy out here. I'm next to a highway, it's a little loud right now. I am not popular enough on YouTube to be doing my stories in the comforts of my own mansion. Maybe one day if I make it up to the higher echelon of YouTubers, maybe that'll happen. Um, I don't like doing voiceovers for videos like this. It just creates a sterile environment. I don't like it. I just think it's ugh. You know what I mean? I like to be on the elements. I like to be outside ever since I was a little boy. So here we are. Hopefully, you know, the wind won't be too bad. It's actually died down. I've been here for about an hour. Without further ado, I'm yammering and I got to stop it because I do that too many times. So let's walk to his grave and I'll tell you the quick backstory of this group and all of the tragedies that have happened uh, in and around it. Let's get right into it. If you are an R&B fan, particularly one that grew up in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, uh, you will definitely know this group High Five. Uh, they had a couple of pretty big singles. Uh, probably the song that you guys will know right off the top is the that uh, Kissing Game. Uh, you know, I like, I like the way when we're playing the Kissing Game. I know I can't sing. Go on YouTube, it's probably better you let Mr. Thompson sing it than yours truly uh, right here. So anyways, uh, back in I believe like the late 80s, very late 80s, you know, when you had groups like uh, New Edition uh, making lots of money and all of that, you had some guys that were wanting to make a group similar to New Edition, right? And so this guy named William Walton, he had a, a singing group called Adore. And him and another uh, producer whose name escapes me, uh, they were tasked with, you know, finding some talent. Now, William, he knew a guy uh, out here in Waco that was a very, very good singer. His name was Tony Thompson. And he knew he was a good singer because he beat him at a couple talent shows in and around the area. So they get this kid, Tony Thompson. Man, I want to say that that kid had to have been like, man, I don't know, 13, maybe 14. He was young, very, very young. So they get him right and they audition him. And this guy sounds just like Ralph Tresvant. Ralph Tresvant and him, they had that very like high voice. Um, I don't know if you would want to call it falsetto. Um, kind of like the lead singer of uh, 112. Uh, 112, I think his name was Marvin Skandrick. Just kind of that high, uh, I don't want to say girly voice, but it was just like a high, a high pitch voice, right? So they get these guys and then they find two other guys uh, to form a court, uh, 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 I guess it would be like a, uh, you know, whatever that word <laughs> that escapes me right now, uh, a threesome, whatever. So eventually they decided to make it a quintet, right? So the original uh, singers from High Five was Tony Thompson, 
Russell Neal, Toriano Easley. Now, remember those two names I just told you. Russell Neal, Toriano Easley. Remember those guys. Because they're going to come up later in this uh, story. And then it was Marcus Sanders and Roderick Clark. Now, originally, before they had the name High Five, they called themselves the Playmates. Not a really good name, uh, just in my personal opinion. And besides, uh, they were probably worried that uh, Hugh Hefner, you know, Playboy guy, uh, the editor of Playboy magazine, was probably going to sue them if they tried to call themselves Playmates. So they decided to call themselves High Five. Now, originally, High Five was H-I and then the numeral sign for five, V. Well, here's the problem. It looks like it says HIV. And at that time, HIV was a very scary disease. So they said, yeah, okay, let's, let's refrain from using HI5. We'll just go with the number, uh, excuse me, hi, and then the word five spelled out. Good choice if I do say so myself. So these guys get together. And, and these are all like kids. They're all, I think they're all teenagers. I don't think, I'm, they might have all been under the age of 18. So originally they came out with a uh, single called Just Can't Handle It. Uh, it was on like the top 100 black R&B charts. Don't ask me why there was such a thing as the top 100 black R&B charts. It's so stupid, but that's what it is. It hit number 68, I believe, on those charts. So everything is going fine, right? So, okay, they got a top 100 hit, right? And then something weird happens. So just as they're getting everything together to release their first album, one of the singers, Toriano Easley, gets into an argument with his girlfriend, Jem Gallagher. I think she was 17 years old at the time, and he might have been 17 too. Don't quote me. I know he was very, very young. He decides to kill her. This guy is about to be a pretty big star. And he kills his girlfriend. And he gets arre arrested out in Oklahoma City is where the crime occurred. He gets arrested. He's locked up. He ends up, uh, I believe, pleading to a, a manslaughter. He only does six and a half years in prison. And this guy has gone on to, like, just just be a nothing in life this guy is so dope uh leaving the scene of an accident blah 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 this guy just forgot about him it's over with he had his chance and he took that young girl's life so he's out of the group so now you got four guys left to continue on with high five and now we need to find a replacement member so since Terriano is cooling on ice in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, he's going to need to be replaced. So he's replaced by a man, or a kid if you want to call it, by the name of Treston Irby. Now Treston Irby was from New York City, and maybe they chose him because he was, I guess you can call him, he was more experienced at life than the other guys. Because when he joins the group, I mean, these guys are already pretty much a big deal. They're on magazine covers. Uh, Ride On Magazine or Jet Magazine or what have you. And when he meets them, he's a little bit surprised because from what his words were, they're kind of like Hicks. You know, he's from New York City. These guys are from like Oklahoma and Texas. And he was like really surprised that these guys that he was seeing on music videos and on the covers of magazines, uh, I kind of like a, sort of kind of like a bunch of nerds in his opinion. So he gets in just as the uh, their big hit, uh, I Like The Way, The Kissing Game, comes out. So around this time, Russell Neal, he ends up leaving the group. Uh, Russell Neal was very, very jealous of Tony Thompson. And he was always, I don't want to say, I don't want to use the word begging, but he was always telling the producers, like, hey, man, I want more singing time. I want, like, I'm talented. I'm a good singer. I'm a great singer. I'm awesome. You know what I mean? I, I should be the front singer of the band, baby, he's saying. Now, I don't know if he's a better singer than Tony Thompson, but that's what he said. So 
he just he's not seeing a way out of you know this band of him trying to make it out on his own so he ends up leaving so he's replaced by somebody else so now you're you're getting guys coming in and coming out of the band right so we're gonna go fast forward a little bit to 1993 so their second album comes out with that one single uh uh i like the way the kissing game and, and they also had another song on that album uh what was it She's playing hard to get. She's playing hard to get. Does anybody remember that? I think that's how it went. Anyways, uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not a good singer at all. So as they're touring in support of their second album, they're doing you know small concert venues. Uh, they're doing uh, radio interviews. They're in Florida, and they're traveling down the I-95, and they get into a bad accident. Somebody from behind slams into the back of their touring van, and it ended up uh, making Roderick a paraplegic from the waist down. Like I said, one of the weirdest groups I've ever heard in terms of bad accidents happening. So he could no longer perform. So now they're down to four guys. So, you know, they go back to Russell Neal. And they say, listen, man, uh, Roderick's hurt. He ain't going to be able to perform again. He's in a wheelchair now. Please just come back to the band. You know, maybe we'll... Maybe we'll talk about you doing more singing work or whatever. I don't know. Maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll do a little project with you. Whatever it is that you want to tell them. They need somebody quick because that single is getting played on the radio. And, you know, all those summer jam concerts and all of that. No, they need five people. Everyone knows high five. They don't know high four. So they plead with him to, to get back with the band. And he says, okay, cool. So they're high five once again and after their second album uh you know their contract with uh i think if they're i want to say they're they were signed with um not def jam but maybe jive records or something like that so originally when they signed their contract because you know like back in those days when you were an artist and you signed the contract you're not making any money your first like one or two albums because that that all that money is like forwarded to you it's an advance but you know that ain't your money because you have to pay them back so their third album, by a lot of estimations by music critics, uh, totally flopped because the the uh, the label. I mean, why are they going to want to spend their money to promote a third album from a band that's just going to leave anyways, right? So they already knew they were going to leave. I, you know, they probably shouldn't have told them that. They probably should have just like kind of you know laid back, but. I believe they were told, yeah, we are not going to resign. So they didn't push the album. There was not a lot of money spent in terms of, uh, you know, just publicity. So the third album flopped. And by that time, Tony Thompson, he is the lead singer of High Five. He, he wants to probably do his own thing. So he goes ahead and, and, and leaves the band and uh, he later went on to have his own uh, album. It was called Sexuality or something like that. And uh, commercially, eh, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where, you know, it, it, you got a group together. It's very difficult when you're in a group that all of a sudden you're, you're you know, you're popular, you're doing big things. And then the lead singer is you know wants to venture out on his own and do something else or something like that and later on tony thompson who also had troubles of his own uh, he had problems with uh, substance abuse or what have you uh, later on he goes to sign for bad boy records but by then that time uh, it was already too late remember what i said about how this group has had a lot of bad luck well, William Walton, uh, the guy that founded the group, in a sense, him and another guy, and he also co-wrote the single. He might have actually wrote it all by himself, that she's playing hard to get. Uh, he ends up passing away. Uh, he's buried not far from here. Uh, I'm going to go visit his grave in a future video. So, he dies. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, he died pretty young. I think he was not even 30 years old. So, Tony Thompson, who's grave is right over there we're about to go walk over there right now uh he ends up also dying uh he died 
June 1st, 2007. Uh, this guy had a um, very sad ending uh, to his life. I guess he was huffing Freon. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, like I said earlier in the video, he's had his problems with, uh, you know, substance abuse problems or whatever. And he was found outside of his apartment uh, somewhere in the Waco, Texas area. And I believe by that time they found him, uh, he was already unconscious and uh, not breathing. So you got the lead singer of a very popular uh, band from the 90s, High Five. Uh, he's no longer with us. But uh, the, 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 the utter weirdness of this group, uh, it doesn't end there. Remember when I told you about that guy, Russell Neal, the one that thought that maybe he needed more singing time? on the band's albums well so fast forward you know to 2014 so this guy's living in houston and at that time he's married to a woman named Catherine martinez and they have two kids a five and a three-year-old so this guy i don't know what he's doing for a living but you're a boy band dropout from the 90s your heyday was at bare minimum 25 years ago. Uh, like, what are you doing with yourself? I have no idea. Now, whether you believe if a man is supposed to provide for the family or not, that's up to you. But uh, Catherine was the one that was wearing the pants in that family. Uh, she was a fitness model, a bodybuilder. Uh, she was trying to get into women's boxing. So this woman had, you know, very attractive, very beautiful woman, had very lofty goals. So at that time, they were living in this apartment in Houston and she was in an abusive relationship but her family would say that when they would see her she would try to you know wear foundation wear makeup to cover up the bruises because you know Ronald was putting his hands on her and Ronald is not working he's not providing for the family so she's taking care of two kids and has to work and has to do this and has to do that and she's just with this loser who, yeah, you were a part of a boy band in the 90s. Now what are you doing? You're nothing. You're hanging on to who you were. So it was either July 2nd or July 3rd, 2014. Ronald Neal, he goes to the, uh, the, the police station down somewhere in Houston. And he says, uh, hey, my name is Ronald Neal. And I killed my wife. I, uh, I need an attorney. So they take him to the room. I don't know if they put handcuffs on. I don't know how that works, but they go to the apartment, they open the door, and sure enough, uh, his wife is in bed, excuse me, in the apartment, laying on the floor, covered up by a blanket. When they pulled the blanket up, I mean, she was pummeled beyond belief, uh, stabbed repeatedly. Um, the mother said in an interview that she could only recognize her she was beaten so badly she was only able to recognize her daughter's mouth like her teeth that was it so this guy is arrested and charged with his uh, wife's murder so he goes to jail he's released on a one thousand dollar bond excuse me one hundred thousand dollar bond he gets out so he's you know waiting for a court date or what have you and he goes to court and you know you know maybe it's postponed or whatever and his bail bondsman so this is this is a little tricky part of the story this is the part of these are the stories where like one article says this something else says that but uh, he went he goes into uh court and they're like okay mr ronald neal and he says no no wait a minute my name isn't ronald neal no my name is jesus christ right and everyone's looking like okay what's this guy's deal he's like no my he goes i will be addressed as jesus christ and this guy's serious so they say okay that's fine um we're going to revoke your bail and we're going to take you into custody because now we believe that you are a danger not only to yourself but to the community so for the last what has it been now going on nine years this guy has been sitting in a mental health hospital here in texas at the rusk hospital so this guy 
has not been convicted of his wife's murder as far as I can tell. And he's just sitting in the mental hospital. He's had mental evaluations. And it is clear to those that have uh, evaluated him, he is not fit to stand trial. So there is no trial for this guy who murdered, who murdered, excuse me, murdered that poor woman. And then now, you know, her family has to deal with this, you know, nutcase. Hopefully he'll never, ever, ever get out. Um, severe, severe mental problems. And come to find out, and this is a weird part of the story as well. Ronald Neal's brother, I don't know if he's an older brother or a younger brother. Um, uh, his name is uh, uh, Ronald Neal. Russell Neal, excuse me. His brother, Ronald Neal, I apologize, uh, is doing 80 years in prison for murdering his wife as well. So you have both brothers, uh, Russell and Ronald Neal. I might have got their names mixed up in the story. Sorry about that. But both the Neal brothers, Russell and Ronald, both murdered their wives. This is just a, a, a very weird story. And... Uh, this right here is the grave of, this is Tony Ulysses Thompson. Nicest stone in the park. Wow, I know some of y'all were emailing me to do this story and oh, trust me, you know, every story I do, it's always location based. So if I'm in, you know, if you email me when I'm in Massachusetts, trust me, I'm, I'm coming down here to do the video. I'm on my way. And um, very unique voice, very, a very gifted singer just had, had issues like some of us unfortunately do. And um, young guy, 31 years old. Uh, man, let me tell you, you could not, you could not be alive in the early 90s without hearing one of their songs on the radio, honestly. All right, rest in peace to Tony Thompson. Very, very gifted singer. And uh, rest in peace to, to both Jem and Catherine. Both those ladies were murdered. And rest in peace to the woman that, uh, that Ronald murdered. Just one of those Odd, odd things in R&B, you know. All right, guys. I am out of here. Sky's closing in on me. Is it going to rain tonight? I don't know. I'm not a weatherman, but better escape before it does. I will catch up with you later, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out.